What's up, everybody? My name is Erin, and welcome to the Mad Maker Studio, and welcome back for the last episode of Monsters of Little Haven. Like a lot of games that I just I just pick up and forget what they are about and then play them. This has exceeded any and all expectations. They've just anything I went into this game with just got blown straight out of the water. We've got six out of eight endings. We've got two more to go, and I'm hoping I'm hoping. I think we all by now know kind of what is in the diary. But I don't know, I just I feel like we're still missing extra pieces of information, which I'm hoping we will get out of these last two endings. So to get to this other ending, we need to go back to the monster chapter. Chapter monster. Which now that I'm thinking about it, it should be totally obvious. If the first if the first two ending chapters that we got were Bram and Brenda, those are the parents and then Esme had a chapter. I think the very last chapter that we have here is going to be called Kenneth. Let's see if I'm right. Oh, what are you doing out here? Oh, what a mess. Fast forwarding up to the this part. We didn't mean to. Oh, we didn't mean to. I was playing with Esme. Uh oh. Oh, with Esme? What kind of games? It's dangerous. Go home now. You didn't let him answer your question. Ram was looking for something in the dark near the shed. Kenneth hugged Esme and sent her forward to protect her from father's anger. While passing the flower bed, Esme correctly noted its state. Well, let, let, let's take a walk. Okay, no, no, no. We don't, we don't want to take a walk. Okay, so if it fast forwarded up to here, I think it doesn't matter. I think we would have gotten her diary back regardless. But okay, let's go. What if mom gets worried? Well, what if mom gets worried? Oh, I don't want mom to worry. But I don't want to go home yet. As soon as I fall asleep, the monster comes. Yep. Oh, I can protect you. Well, let's walk a bit more, please. I have so much to tell you. Was that, was that just an illusion of a choice? We're going to take a walk no matter what? Well, you can tell me everything at home. Oh, you won't believe it. I have to show you. Have you ever heard mom sing? Well, I can't remember. Probably when I was little. Her voice is wonderful. Esme grabbed Kenneth's arm and led him into the backyard. Listen. Quiet melodies were trailing over from the old well's direction. Oh, is it really mom? Could have been mom. That is her monster. Now you can see it. Oh, I don't like this anymore. What kind of monster sings in mom's voice? He's not evil, probably. They don't believe me. They think I'm stupid. No one thinks you're stupid. I barely believe in it myself. I barely believe in it myself. Chapter Carry. Uh, the grandma? I was expecting Kenneth, but sure, what is Carrie? 
What what is Carrie's role in all this? Is oh, this is so not what I was expecting. Esme climbed to the edge of the well and began to walk back and forth, swaying ostentatiously. Well, get off now! It's dangerous. So what? I'm a ghost. You might fall down. Isn't it enough? Yeah, I'll be okay. Esme got down and sat on the edge of the well. I'm sorry. Are you sure no one thinks I'm stupid? I'm sure. But they said hurtful things. Well, that's not what they meant. You're always ready to move mountains, but sometimes you're, you're like that. You walk on the edge. No hard feelings. I don't. I just feel offended sometimes. But I know they're just not ready to see what's around them. And if they don't try to run away from their monsters, they won't be able to speak again. Shall I be able to speak again? I don't know. We never found out what kind of monster you have. Well, how do we find out? We need to ask the other monsters. Ew. Oh, I don't really like the idea. With a loud noise, the well suddenly became wider. That's new. As Kenneth and Esme ran to the edge, a beam of light hit them from the well. Covering his eyes with his hands to get used to the light, Kenneth looked at the bottom of the well. Some silhouettes were flashing inside. Kenneth recoiled from the edge. What's happening? I'll introduce you to everyone. A spiral staircase began to grow, protruding from the old mason from the bottom of the well. Esme climbed to the edge again and held out her hand to Kenneth. Uh, aren't you scared? I've seen it all before, and you will. Oh, what for? What's in there? I'm so curious. It's a surprise. I don't like the way you said that. The sound of muffled voices and birds singing was coming from below. Oh, oh, does anyone else know about this place? Nope. Kenneth grew nervous. Why, why do we go there? What are, whose are those voices? You won't believe me anyway. The ground trembled under their feet. A mechanical noise began to come from the well. Oh, the entrance is closing. Come quickly. They'll be offended if we don't go. Esme got angry. Oh, we don't like Esme when she's angry. The ground trembled even harder. The beam of light coming from the well narrowed. Otherwise, I'll go alone. Okay, we're going to trust her and approach. I am so curious. At the last moment, Kenneth ran into the well after Esme. They both rolled down the stairs. Flying over it about a dozen meters down, they rolled into a small opening at the bottom, resembling a door, where the light came from. Once outside, Kenneth was blinded by the bright sun. When he woke up, he saw that he was on the shore of what seemed to be an endless lake covered with fog. Kenneth jumped up and discovered that Esme had disappeared. 
behind a huge cliff. That's where he fell from. There was a closed door at the top of the cliff. There were no ceilings, no walls. Kenneth turned to the lake and noticed a rowboat on the shore. Esme was in it. Esme, you okay? He stumbled several times while running to her, but still ended up in the same boat. Esme hugged Kenneth tightly, as if she hadn't seen him in quite a while. Oh, well, what happened? Did you see the monsters? Oh, I'm glad you're here. I mean, I'm glad to see you, but not that you're here. Oh, we jumped down the well and died. Esme was embarrassed. Sorry. Well, we fell here together. I followed you. Oh, what do you mean? I was here before you came. The Esme on the surface was all in his mind. Oh, no. Kenneth is dead. Well, looking at the bright side... <laughs> Because we would have had to get this ending anyway. If we have the real Esme with us now, maybe she can give us the rest of the missing pieces. What? What are you talking about? We went after monsters together. But you, you don't remember anything after the fall? There are no monsters here. And... I didn't fall. I was just waiting for you here. Uh, I, 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 I don't understand. You'll get used to it. Sit down. Take the oars. Oh, where are we? Soon, you will see. Just row. But, but where? Oh, there's nothing ahead. If you turn around, you won't see anything either. Does it mean nothing was there? Kenneth was confused, but for some reason he was feeling calmness that gave him the strength to row into the unknown. I missed you. Oh, we haven't seen each other, but not for long. Time goes on in its own way here. Sometimes it seems to run forward, and sometimes it stops. Oh, we, we shouldn't get lost. Kenneth looked at the reflection rippling on the surface of the lake. <laughs> Can't wait to get home. I think we're almost there. The fog lifted. The familiar shore appeared on the horizon. Kenneth was delighted. You're in for a surprise. Kenneth heard barking. He recognized it immediately. A moment later, the boat washed ashore. Kenneth dropped the oars and ran. It was Baloo. He's alive! No, 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 he's not. <laughs> not really. Don't you understand? Esme's over here trying to trying to drop some wisdom on you without just like bluntly saying it. But he's right there. Kenneth happily scratched Baloo behind the ear gradually accepting new circumstances. So, so we're, we're like him? Something like that. Not that I'm used to it myself. Kenneth started to cry. And, and, and mom? I don't know. Esme looked down. I miss her. 
As if having remembered something, Esme decided to distract Kenneth from his sad thoughts. Follow me! Esme was pushing Kenneth until they reached their place, under a large oak tree that stood in the middle of a wheat field not far from the house. We're in Little Haven, only it's somehow not that... Not that gloomy? Yes. Kenneth was so intrigued by the new old world that he took the initiative from Ismi. And what do we have at home? Follow me. Oh, I haven't been there yet. Oh, why? I was too scared to go alone, but now I can't even remember what I was afraid of. Kenneth and Esme ran into the plot, past the pier, and headed straight for the house. Suddenly, they both stood rooted to the spot. They heard a very familiar voice. It was mother's singing. As soon as they approached the house, their mother came to the doorstep. I saw you through the window. She hugged Kenneth and Esme tightly. Mother was shining in the sun. The children would hardly remember her like this. I managed to sort out a bit how things work here. What? I'm so glad I'm here. Her daughter died. And then her son died. Did she take her own life? Mom, don't cry. It's okay, sugar. And, and Dad, will he get here? If he's not here already, he won't. There was a slight tension. However, it could not last long in such a beautiful place. Who wants pancakes? Uh, I'm all tensed up and nervous again. Who wants pancakes? Who wants pancakes? I don't like the way you're saying that. Are you really our mom? I don't think so. I'm getting scared. Oh, I don't like those ellipses. I hear some things in the background. It sounds like people talking. Maybe are we in the hospital? Kenneth? A bright light struck Kenneth in the eyes. He opened his eyes. Carrie, he's awake. Oh my goodness. Okay, we survived. Doctor. Okay, so, so mom is not dead. Don't worry, my little one. Everything's going to be okay. Grandma and I won't leave you. Kenneth woke up and could barely see the silhouettes. Voices blurred in the air. It smelled like hospital and mom's pancakes there. Hold up, hold the phone. What? <laughs> Am I going to get one ending that is satisfying? <laughs> Okay, so we, we woke up in the hospital, we did not die, but I think we fulfilled something like because Esme said she's been waiting there for a very long time and she hasn't brought herself to like go back to their house yet on the other side. So maybe Kenneth's job or duty in that respect was to, to guide his sister to a home where she finally feels safe. What could possibly result from this, this last ending? Chapter 
Carrie. Esme climbed to the edge of the well and began to walk back and forth. All right, let's go. Swing. Let's go, man. We're in the final stretch. The beam of light coming from the well narrowed. Otherwise, I'll go alone. We're pulling Esme away from the well. At the last moment, before the light in the well slammed shut, Kenneth pulled Esme back. Esme fell to the ground, face down. Ouch. Kenneth was frightened and froze, looking at Esme, slowly getting up. What have you done, you fool? You can't bleed, you're a ghost. Where'd your sweater go? When Esme turned around, Kenneth noticed that her nose was bleeding. Kenneth ran to Esme, guilt-ridden. But Esme cast him back to the well with one look. Don't come near me. This is all your fault. Oh, what do you mean? Despite constantly feeling guilty about Esme, Kenneth stopped recognizing her and therefore allowed himself to be angry. All I do is try to keep you safe. I don't want to lose you, or even to offend. Oh, you're making it worse. If you didn't resist, we'd be together by now. Esme softened her tone sharply. Baloo was also there. But now, this is all you're left with. Esme pointed to Baloo's grave which was right next to the well, throwing away a layer of stones and earth with a mystic force. There was a mummified dog skeleton crawling with earthworms. Mm. Oh, enough. The blood that was coming from Esme's nose did not stop. On the contrary, both nostrils were bleeding by now. You found my diary but you're afraid to read it. You can't do anything. I want to read this freaking diary. Esme's eyes were bloodshot. Oh, Kenneth, you better open that book. Open it up. Oh, you're not Esme. Esme's skin stiffened, becoming blue. Hmm, aren't I? Who am I then? A monster, and not one of those. I don't know what you are. You're an abomination. You created me. Hey, yep, and all the signs of, like, his... Like, I've not been paying attention to, like, all the different stages of, you know, stages of grief. But, like... Denial, anger, bargaining, oppression, and acceptance. I think those are it. Esme slowly approached Kenneth, who was sitting on the ground. Look over there. Esme pointed to a puddle a few meters away. Oh, no, leave me alone. With incredible strength, Esme grabbed Kenneth by the scruff of the neck and dragged him to the puddle. Look at you! She pointed to the reflection in the puddle. Well, so what? What do you want from me? A moment later, Kenneth seemed to be pierced by something. <gasps> what? He turned around thinking Esme was gone but she was still there. Esme didn't have a reflection. He looked at her and saw that she was giving her diary to him. Oh, Ooh, I thought Esme had stabbed us with a knife from somewhere. I guess we have our Swiss Army pocket knife on our backpack. <laughs> Kenneth grabbed the diary, rushed away from the puddle, and ran toward the house. 
Kenneth did not notice that the first rays of the sun appeared over the horizon. There was some noise on the plot. Kenneth saw the police gathered around the house and the pier. We're never going to read this freaking diary. From their conversation, it was clear that they were looking for the father of the Murphy family. Kenneth ran into the house and dug into his mother's arms. Oh, Mom, I'm sorry. I could have helped, but I didn't. Kenneth, what are you talking about? Calm down, my dear. Kenneth took Esme's ill-fated diary and handed it to his mother. At this point, a policeman intervened in the conversation. He turned to Kenneth. Well, can I see it? The question was rhetorical since he had planned to take the diary anyway. Brenda handed the diary to the policeman. After flipping through it, he began to mumble something unintelligible, as if convinced of something. Brenda, your husband took a boat, but it was hardly a well-considered decision. The probability of escape is almost zero. And unfortunately for him, he took a gun, which he himself can suffer from. Although, if you want my opinion, no regrets here after what he did. Yeah, I'm not going to say it, but we, we kind of called that early on. And with a gun, he pushes us to desperate measures. Perhaps it will serve real justice, not imaginary justice. Brenda was looking at one point mechanically, patting Kenneth on the head. You are talking about your mother. Call her. You may need her help. Yes, why is this chapter called Carrie? Another policeman, a younger one, entered the house. Caught him? The younger policeman nodded. He was clearly on edge. They stepped aside to exchange a few words. Then the first policeman came back. After approaching Brenda, he took off his hat. My condolences. Completely apathetic, Brenda asked him a question. Has your justice been served? The policeman was embarrassed. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I probably shouldn't have told you all this. Then will you finally leave my house? Sure, ma'am. Sorry again. The policeman stumbled slightly on the spot and moved toward the door, taking other unwanted guests with him. On the doorstep of an empty house, a shape has formed. It was not in a hurry to leave. Granny! Carrie? What? We, we didn't get to read the diary. We don't even get to see the grandma. Uh. That it? There's no secret? We did, we, we did it. Uh, I guess with the monster gone, the like with the dad gone, the grandma comes in. We unlocked a bunch of achievements. <laughs> I still feel unfulfilled, like there's missing information. I mean, I think like we can we can piece together what happened. I don't want to say it, but the father was the monster and it was the darkness and he could no longer cope with himself. And in this ending, he took his life. Presumably, or the police got him. I but they weren't clear, but this was a, an interesting game, just the way that the story was told. You needed all the different endings 
to like really fully piece together, but at least with Carrie's ending and chapters, it feels like, you know, she's there. There's she's the new beginning. She's hope she gave Brenda her new beginning. Didn't believe it was too late to adopt her. So I think she's going to do that for Kenneth, too. She's going to be there for them and they're going to get through this. Oh, wow, this is uh, sad and dark and scary. <laughs> And very, very emotional roller coaster. But that's that's it. We're done. That was Monsters of Little Haven. I will put the link to the Steam page down in the description if you'd like to experience this for yourself. Maybe there are some Easter eggs hidden throughout. I didn't look for any. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna step out. I'm going to think about this for a little bit and then I'm going to go to bed. But thank you so much for joining me. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'm always open and down for game suggestions if you'd like to leave those in the comments. I appreciate it if you do. But as always, I hope to see you next time. Bye!